So, hi, this is example number 8 of section 17.5. So here we have a truck moving forward in to the right with an acceleration of 3 meters over second squared. And we have a cylinder, a concrete cylinder in top of the truck. We are being asked to find the angular acceleration of the cylinder uh, when the truck has a linear acceleration of 3 meters over second squared. And they also said that this is rolling without slip. First of all, we will do our free body diagram and our kinetic diagram, and we will do our equations of motion between those two with those two diagrams. So the first thing that I do is free body diagram of my cylinder. So what forces do I have? I have the weight, and the weight will be 500 kilograms times 9.8, which is the gravity. Then I have two forces in the contact point, right? I have a normal force, and I have a friction force. Remember that because we have the condition rolling without sleeping, these two forces are independent. When we have the condition of rolling without sleeping, we know that force is less than the kinetic uh, friction coefficient times the normal. But since it's less, we do not know exactly how much less. But we know that uh, they are not equal. So we do not, we cannot relate them. So those are two different unknowns. So here, let's call this point, let's give them, a, give it a name. Let's call this point A. So if we have this point A, let's, let's name it normal A and friction A just to know that this is the point where we have those, uh, those uh, forces. Do our kinetic diagram, so we do the same cylinder, but right? And what do we have? We have an acceleration. Let's say, since our truck is moving forward, we can imagine that we are, the cylinder moves forward as well. So we have mass times acceleration, and then we have a rotation. I can imagine that since uh, the, the truck is moving forward, it will rotate to the back. So I will write my angular rotation over like that. So I will have an inertia over that center of mass times alpha. And that alpha is the, the variable that I've been asked to find. Equations of motion. Equations So I could, as you know, my equations of motion in a plane will be forces in x equals m times acceleration of that, of the center of gravity, forces in y, mass acceleration of that, y. And then I have moment. I can take moment in any point. If I take moment, for example, in my center of gravity, I will have to take moment in the center of gravity in this diagram. And in this diagram, if I take moment, I will have the force A as an unknown. So I will decide, since I'm not being asked to find those two forces, I will take moment of the external forces in point A. So I cancel those two forces. So, and that will be, you remember that I, there are several ways to write the kinetic moment or the moment of the kinetic forces. And one way to write it is the inertia about the center of mass times alpha plus the, the vector from that point that I'm taking moment about, which is, will be this point, and this is our g, right, cross mass acceleration of that point. So those are my equations. The one that I will use is the last one because the other two will give me those forces that I don't want to find. First of all, I have to find the inertia. And you remember for a cylinder, it's just mass times radius squared. The mass is 500. The radius is 0 0.5. So the inertia is equals to 125 kilograms 
meters square. Obviously, I have that, that is 0 0.5. So my moment, and take moment right here at this point, and these two forces do not make any moment because they, they don't have a distance. And this one, the weight goes through. So I, have, I can say that the external moments are 0 and are equal to that right here. So that will be 125 alpha. That's positive, and then I have this is 0 0.5 in K cross M A G in I, right? So, so in K no, sorry, in in J, in J. So at the end I have 125 alpha J I is negative 0 0.5 and 500 AG. This is my first equation, which is equal to zero. So this is the first equation that I have. And as you see, I have two unknowns. I have two unknowns, which are alpha and acceleration of the center of gravity. So I need another equation, but as you see, my three, my three kinetic equations, so if I add forces in x, I will have F, Fa as an unknown, and then if I add forces in y, I have N, A, N A as an unknown. So actually, those two equations I do not want to apply because I will get more unknowns. So what I will do is a kinematic analysis. Let me, let me draw it here, maybe so. So I'm going to use a coordinate system fixed to my disk that is in A. So my, using that system, I can get the, the acceleration in G, which is, I already know that is in I, will be equals to acceleration in A of A as a vector plus alpha times the vector from G respect to A minus omega square Rg A in J, right? And what is the acceleration in A? So if we analyze the two points, that one point and that one of the truck, let's call it A prime, they have exactly the same tangent acceleration but this one that is from the, from the cylinder has an additional normal acceleration that you know we did that in the theory that is angular velocity squared times the radius of curvature. So we have here that A will be the tangent acceleration that we know that is 3, right? Those two are the same. That's the stroke acceleration in I plus angular velocity squared times 0 0.5 in J plus. Here we have, this is in alpha, and I put it in K cross 0 0.5 in J minus omega squared 0 0.5 in J. So at the end, I have a GI is equals to 3I plus omega square. So as you see, those two cancel out. Those are the same exactly. So and I have k times i, that gives me a negative i. So it's negative i, 0 0.5 in i. So here, my second equation will be a g equals 3 negative 0 0.5 alpha. And that will be my second equation. So I got the first equation from my equations of motion and the second equation because of the kinematic analysis. Why could I get that equation from the kinematic analysis? Because I was given that rolling without sleeping gave me information enough to relate those accelerations, the acceleration with the, of the center of gravity and the, the angular acceleration of the system. So solving one and two, 
I get that alpha is equals 3 radians over second square and acceleration of the center of gravity is 1.5 meters over second square. Those are the results and that's what I was asked to find.